As you can see, I'm sitting in my car and it is very foggy out. But we have the club championship today. This is at Knollwood Golf Course. They've got two courses. So today we're going to be playing the old course and tomorrow we're going to be playing on the new course. Combine those scores together and whoever shoots the lowest is going to be the overall champion. We'll see if I have my game today. Uh, if you watched the last video that I put up, my swing was a little bit rusty. I'm hoping for fewer bogeys today, but we'll see how it goes. Let's just have a fun day and let's see if this fog clears. All right, come along. The first hole of the day is a short par 4, it's only about 250 yards, and it is straight ahead, you cannot see it at all. I've got my 3 wood here and unfortunately pull it off hard to the right, but it does stay in bounds. And I'm far enough back that that tree that's in front of me, it's got plenty of room to go over it, and I hit a really good shot here. But because it's so dewy and there is no spin on that ball, it hit the middle of the green and it just released all the way to the backside. And I did not have a good first putt here, leaving it well short. So a very challenging attempt for a par to start the day. And unfortunately, I leave it on the low side and I have to tap in for a bogey. And although it's kind of cool and wet conditions to start the day, it's got some really nice views on this course. So this second hole is a par 3, and I push this one off to the left, so already my swing feels a little off. There's a loud knock off a tree, and I wasn't quite sure where it was going to go, but I actually got really fortunate. It almost bounced directly back, and I have a chance to chip on here. And while my short game has been one of my strong suits in the past, I just have not had it to the consistency I would like in 2024. And you can see that evidenced here as I take this 9-iron and I send it way too far past that hole. So this is a really long par attempt coming back, and although it has a really big swing on it, I certainly gave it too much respect. That is a tap-in bogey. Not an ideal way to start the round, but believe me, this is just setting the stage for what a roller coaster 18 holes this ends up being. Unfortunately, this par 3 is a hole that really gets in my head, and there's water off to the left here, which I find as I absolutely thin this ball. So now I'm trying to do whatever I can to avoid a double bogey. I drop here in the zone that they have marked off for us today, and I'm just trying as best I can to pitch this on close. And it is all over the pin and just scoots by. I actually held my breath for a second thinking it might have a chance to go in. Would have been a miracle. But I make a really good comeback putt. And that's a bogey I have to be happy with. This next hole is another short par 4. But the green is tucked back around some trees. So I wanted to go left here. But unfortunately I got a little bit thin on it and it went right. But fortunately, I got a really good bounce, and it was nice to see that the pin was actually to the left of this tree, because sometimes when it's in the middle of the green, I would have had no shot. So this is a really nice chip on, and after having three bogeys in a row, I have a chance at a birdie. And I drain it. So I get a chance to flap those wings for the first time today. And being plus two through four now feels a lot better than being plus three through three. Unfortunately, I forgot to hit record on my tee shot. But it was a frustrating one because I tried to hit a little fade with my three wood. And it went completely straight and out of bounds. So I had to take a drop. And thankfully this is a par five. So although this is my third shot, I'm up close to the green. And I have a chance to pitch it close enough that I might be able to save a par. But this is not a good chip on. I think I went with a 56 degree here when I probably should have just gone for a 9 iron. But because I've had a little bit of a rough time getting the read on that, I just didn't trust myself. So this is a long attempt at a par putt. It goes a little bit off to the right and I make a big mistake here. As instead of just marking my ball and then taking my time, I just decided that it was pretty straight in and I left it short. I did not compensate for it being slightly uphill. That is a double bogey. And that sets the stage for what is about to be one of the most embarrassing moments of my entire season. Because my mental game has not been the strongest in 2024. So this little bit of a toey slice with my driver is a result of me having that double bogey still in my head. And being frustrated that I often follow up a good hole with a not good hole. I did get really fortunate that this ball stayed in bounds. I have enough of a backswing to still give a full attempt at this 60 degree wedge, but unfortunately I thin it and it manages to go through this tree that I was trying to get over. But you can tell how frustrated I am here because it soared to the worst spot possible. I'm now left with this chip onto the green on this really awkward downhill lie. I was trying to just flop it off the bank and hoped that it would kick left, but it did not. And you can hear me quit on myself here. It was a good championship, guys. And watching this round back, I am really disappointed with the way that I handled this situation. I am only on the sixth hole out of 36 holes, and I just seem to have given up. I, for whatever reason, decided that I had taken myself completely out of the opportunity to compete in this tournament. I think it was partly because a couple of the guys in my group were playing well, but going back-to-back -back double bogeys was not ideal. 
Somehow, I managed to shake that off though on this next tee shot, and it's a really short par 5 when we're playing from the white tees. So although I only hit this drive about 260 or 70 yards, I have less than 120 yards into the green now, and this approach is pretty decent. I probably could have gone one more club up, and it stays at the front of the green. So this is a long attempt at an eagle putt. So even though I've gone back-to-back -back double bogeys, my hope here is to get it close enough for a tap-in birdie, but I still leave it a little bit shorter than I would have liked. However, there is a chance I might be able to make one again. I'm just going to put up no pars today. Slap them. <laughs> yeah. I call this the Picasso rounds. Yeah. It's just all shapes. And although I said two holes ago was the most embarrassing thing that I'd had happen to me the entire season, I'm about to one-up that. Because here I go again, following up a nice hole, a really good birdie, and then I absolutely shank this 7-iron and pull it straight into the trees. But this is the embarrassing part. Throwing my club is completely a result of me having that pent-up frustration inside myself and being so disappointed, but that is an incredibly immature thing that I did, and I really wish I hadn't, but it's done. And for whatever reason, it might have been the thing that I needed, because from here on out, you are going to see a lot better golf. So if you're still watching at this point, thank you so much. Even though I thinned that approach shot, it actually worked out well because it hit the hill and it bounced into a nice spot on the green. I had a chance to actually save that par, but the putt just missed. However, I tap in for the bogey, and I have to be happy with that anytime I have a lost ball. Now we have another short par 4, and with the driver here, I managed to hit a really good swing, and it ends up on the green. So this one's only about 255 yards, I think, downhill. So it was just about a three-quarter driver that I was going for. And you can see I'm all the way on the back side here. And I take my time. I'm just speeding up the camera here so you don't have to watch me take a full read on this thing. But I knew this was an opportunity to try to get at least another stroke back. From what I could tell, there wasn't a lot of break on here. But with it being quite a bit downhill, the pace was my main concern. And this is easily my best putt of the day as that almost drops. So that is an incredibly easy tap in birdie. And there we go. After an absolutely chaotic, and I'd say close to terrible front nine, I'm still only plus five. And this is now the point where I'm starting to rethink what's happening in my round. Even though I was playing some of the worst golf I felt I had played all year, I was still only a couple of shots behind the two guys in my group. So as we go to this 10th hole, I tried to slice around this little dogleg par four, and it went a little bit further left than I would have liked. So I've got this bit of an edge of the tree that was in my way. And that got in my head because I thought I could try and hit a little bit of a fade, just kind of a low one around the tree, but it didn't quite work out. So I pulled a bit off to the right, and I don't have a wonderful chip on here, but it's close enough to try and save a par. And although this doesn't drop, I'm not going to let this bogey frustrate me as much as the other ones, because I am now plus six through ten, and I just want to try and get back on course and play my game as best as possible from here on out. Thankfully, this 11th hole is another short par 4. I'm sure you're starting to figure out by now that this Norwood old course has a lot of short par 4s, and I was able to put basically the same swing as the previous hole, where I had a little bit of a fade on that 3-wood. I left myself in a great spot and a really good pitch on there that almost holed out again, and this is a really short chance to tap in birdie. And although I'm not using driver a lot today, this is a hole that I decide to do it because there's a lot of room off to the right. So I set up over to that side and try and do a bit of a fade. It goes a little bit further left than I would have liked, but I managed to stay in a decent spot. So I'm in the rough just to the right of the cart path here, and it's only about 100 yards onto the green. And I have a really good pitch there that goes just past the hole and almost make a back-to-back -back birdie. But that's a pretty stress-free par. And believe it or not, that was my very first par of the day. And it's the first time that I've put two good holes back to back. So with this drivable par 4, I use my 5 wood because it's about 225 yards to the green. So if I really get a hold of it, I can probably get there. But it ends up a bit short and leaves myself a relatively straightforward chip on. The one thing I could not do here is go past the hole. So with a 56 degree, I knew I was airing a bit more on the side of caution. So I left a little bit longer birdie putt than I probably could have done if I got a bit more aggressive there. But I was just trying to keep some positive vibes going. So that's a back-to-back -back par situation that I am very happy with. 
And this next hole is a par 5 that you can see I pull out my 5 wood again. There are a few times that I try to hit driver on this hole, but I have to hit the perfect fade to end up in a good spot of the fairway, and very rarely do I go for the green in 2 anyway. So these are back to back good 5 woods. I'm just off to the right side of the fairway now for this third shot into the green, and it's another pretty good pitch on. I go a little bit further than I was hoping, but I do have a chance for another birdie. So I just keep fighting my way through this course. I'm now plus four, and you can take a look at my face here as I am trying to figure out what the heck is happening. And while I was trying to just laugh it off and roll with the punches, I wish I would have had a little bit more focus on this next hole because it's a very short par three that I left well short of the pin. And then this first putt attempt. Yeah, that leaves a lot to be desired. I left that incredibly short, so unfortunately, following up that birdie, I now have a bogey on a really easy par three. But I am proud that I have regrouped in terms of not letting myself get frustrated. So even though some of these holes are not going according to plan, I'm not beating myself up about it. And this is just a beautiful looking tee shot on this short par 5 that we have up here. I use a 5 iron because I am not getting aggressive with this hole. You can tell that where I leave it is almost perfect because it leaves this little bit of a gap here that I just lay up with an 8 iron. And I pulled it a little bit more to the right than I would have liked, but I still have a chance into the green. Fortunately, I found this really dry and patchy area, so I couldn't use a club with any sort of loft on it. And I think I just went with a 9 iron here, trying to bump and run it up. But it didn't really roll towards the hole, so I've got this long putt off from the fringe. That is probably my second best putt of the day, and it just falls short. But that's a tap in par, and I regrouped from that bogey. Next up we have a par 3. These are the final two holes to go on the first round. And this is a nice shot. I give myself a chance at a birdie. It is a pretty big swing that's on this putt though. So I was going to be happy with the par. And that's what I have to take. The 18th hole is a drivable par 4. So I decided to pull out my driver. And here's how it went. Yeah, I know. I thought it was going to kick left off the hill. But I think you're there. it's up there. And you can tell that we all thought it was going to be a really good result, but because it didn't get that kick left off the hill, it ended up being a, a bit short. And unfortunately, this was another bad chip. So I'm already seeing one thing I really need to work on in the 2025 season. Uh, this putt was also really bad. Thankfully, I was able to drain that par putt because if I would have ended up with a bogey after being so close to the green on the tee shot, I don't know what would have happened to my brain. Anyways, thank you very much for watching today's round. This is the end of day one from the club championship, and the scorecard really shows what a roller coaster of a round this was, and here are some thoughts I had at the very end. Well, <laughs> that was a round. <laughs> Jeez. If you have been a subscriber to my channel, you're probably used to seeing golf like this. Some ups, some downs. I am actually very proud of myself that that back nine was significantly better than the front nine. The mental game has been tough and a grind for me this entire season. To see it pay off for at least nine holes, or ten, even if I include hole nine. I was minus one from hole nine on. The group that I was playing with, a couple guys were really dialed in. So right now, all I know is I'm pretty sure the clubhouse leader is minus one. And then one of the other guys was plus two. So I've got six strokes. It's possible to make it up on day two. Uh, the Knollwood new course plays a bit tougher than this old course. So hopefully I can wake up and start the round a little bit better. I'll do another quick little intro in the morning, letting you know how I'm feeling, uh, because these are just my thoughts post round uh, from day one. Uh, so thank you very much for watching this round and let's go to the round two.